Okay guys, hi and welcome back to my SimSig tutorials and in this one I want to take you through the Brighton simulation and Brighton is one of the stations you get for free, one of the simulations you get for free when you download SimSig and I find it's great, it's complicated enough to be interesting but it is simple enough to operate just about with one player so it's quite a cool way of burning away uh, a few hours so just in by way of introduction Brighton if you don't know is a station on the south coast of the UK and if we look on the map we can see Brighton is down here so this simulation covers just north of Haywards Heath just to west of Hove and just to the west of Lewis here so we have this branch we have that branch we have that that and we have the station itself so we tend to get quite a mixture of trains. Brighton has a lot of trains that go up to Victoria Station in London. It also has a lot of Thameslink trains. It used to be called uh, First Capital Connect, depending on how young you are. But the Thameslink trains go from Brighton up through London and go as far as uh, Bedford in the north. And then there are also trains from Brighton direct across to places like Portsmouth and Southampton, and also trains through to Lewis and Eastbourne, some trains as far as Ashford, and uh, you also get trains that go from Hayward Heath and avoid Brighton and go around directly to places like Eastbourne, as well as trains that come this way and avoid Brighton and go around towards kind of Worthing and Portsmouth as well, uh, Littlehampton sometimes. So let's take a look through the, the pages. If you can see the scroll bar here, it's roughly two monitors wide. So if you had two monitors, you'd pretty much fit the whole thing on here. Uh, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll up uh, and uh, you can't use the numbers. I think you used to be able to use the numbers to scroll as well. But scroll wheel works pretty well and you can obviously just drag backwards and forwards. So we're going to start here at the north end of the simulation. So Balcombe Tunnel is just south of Crawley, about 15 miles south of Crawley. And so all of your London trains are going to come in here. Now, they don't come in super fast. So when you get one approaching here, you've got time to kind of think about what's going on. And really, your first piece of kind of control is Haywards Heath Station. So you have four platforms here, as you can see. And as the trains come southbound, one thing that's really important is checking what platform it's going to head into at Haywards Heath. And the reason is there isn't really any hard and fast rules. Most of the uh, Class 1A trains could, uh, come through Platform 2. They don't all stop there, although most of them do. But sometimes an A train will go into Platform 1. Likewise, there are lots of trains that, that divide at Haywards Heath on the way south. So usually, again, they will divide in Platform 1. The front portion will either go towards Hove or towards Lewis and Eastbourne. But the uh, sometimes it's the front portion, sometimes it's the back portion. So again, you just got to kind of check what's going on. So if we look at this one, for instance, uh, this one isn't actually dividing, so that's OK. But you, again, just keep an eye on stuff. You can keep these signals um, not autoed because there's train ready to start signals on here for both platforms. So if you want, especially for trains that are stopping anyway, so that one's stopping as well, that's fine. Obviously, if it's not stopping, then you're going to need to signal it through. So just keep an eye on platforms. Uh, there wasn't anything or hasn't been anything for me in the sidings at Haywards Heath. So I'm not sure if the default timetable has any of that or not. And there is one freight train a day that comes into Ardingley. So it actually comes in from Balcombe Tunnel into Platform 1. It reverses without the locomotive changing ends. And then this section stays occupied for as long as the train's in there. What you have to do manually is when the incoming train arrives, you'll see that it won't exit the simulation. It will show in the timetable list as, you know, stopped, no more timetable trips. So at a certain point, I think it's about half nine in the morning, you should assign it to the second freight uh, timetable entry and make it run to that timetable. And then it will pull back out to platform one, reverse back out and go up to Balcom. Other than that, so far, everything on the simulation is passenger, empty coaching stock or uh, network rail kind of trains. So platform one and two, we've talked a little bit about 
Platform three and four, again, very similar. So most trains that join, join on the fast platform on platform three, whereas most that divide, divide on platform one, which is interesting. But again, they don't all join on platform three. Occasionally, they join on platform four. So keep an eye on that. Otherwise, uh, it's not usually the end of the world, but you can get tripped up a little bit. Another thing to notice with Hayward Teeth is sometimes the empty coaching stock trains are timetabled to, to, to go past a joining train on platform four. So if you've got that, again, just be careful. Don't be too quick to uh, to set the route out of the platform, because obviously if you start doing that and then you uh, cancel that route, you're going to get the uh, approach lock in. You're going to get the guy phoning his controller and all kinds of stuff. So. Uh, keep an eye on that. There are about uh, maybe three or four times when an empty coaching stock needs to pass by. All of these trains coming north, again, just check platform four for that one. There's no hard and fast rules, but at Haywards Heath, again, quite a common pattern is that the class two stopping service will pull into platform four. And then a class one will usually go through northbound without stopping. And then Im uh, immediately then the class two train We'll pull out behind it. So again, it's quite common. Just keep clicking here. It's not not too difficult. So that's probably all there is to say about that. If we move further south, then once we get to here, we're up to the top to section A. Again, nothing particularly in between these. A lot of these lines are uh, bi-directional. I can't imagine how difficult that would be to run those <laughs> or up the, the wrong line or whatever so in this timetable I haven't had to do that thankfully which is all nice and easy now this Kima Junction is quite an interesting one so trains to Eastbourne that are not going into Brighton which is basically none of them will go up the junction here and cross to, to Eastbourne and likewise trains from Eastbourne that are going to London via Haywards Heath will come up here most probably of all the trains that come through the junction, I would say about 10 percent of them are going to go down that line there. The remainder are going to go down towards Brighton. So as an idea, sometimes you can leave that uh, signal auto. I usually leave it auto until I see a train coming here. That's like a one F is usually the trains to Lewis. And then I'll, you know, I might then kind of click off the auto button for the train that's before the one that needs to go up here. And I often leave that signal autoed because you have a fair bit of time when a train appears here. Um, very often it will stop at uh, Plumpton. So you've got time to actually go right. Well, you know, when do I need to unset the auto button? When do I need to let that train through? There are two things that are worth mentioning about these joining and, and uh, the joining trains particularly. The first of which is these trains from Lewis often arrive at Kima Junction very early, easily five minutes, sometimes longer than that. And the temptation would be to send the train through because it's there. However, you need to pay attention to the order in which the trains join. So pretty much all of these trains from Lewis, which are the F, um, F code, head code, will join with the 1H trains which come from Hove, which we'll see in a minute. And the ordering, again, is different. Sometimes 1F is at the front, sometimes 1H is at the front, but you need to make sure they go in the right order because the head code on the front is going to be the one that's going to go forwards to London. So sometimes this is five minutes early, but the 1H train is still here, in which case, obviously, you can just leave it at the red signal until you're ready to go. I'm sure at some point they'll call you up and complain, but uh, serves them right for being early, I guess. And the only other thing to note here is this level crossing. It's a manual level crossing, so you have to lower it like um, all of the other manual crossings in SimSig. Once it's lowered, the clear button flashes, you left click that and you can then set a, uh, a route across it. You can set the route before the uh, timetable, uh, before the level crossing is lowered, but you obviously, the signal won't clear until the level crossing is cleared. One thing I have noticed on this, and I'm not sure if it's based on real life, is a lot of times you press the clear button and it comes up with a message saying that the crossing's blocked by a vehicle. And of course, it's really annoying because you're usually hurrying, trying to get all the trains through. So you have to raise the barriers, wait for them to raise, lower it again, clear it again. So it's a bit of a pain. So bearing in mind uh, that kind of issue with the level crossing, it's kind of, you know, not, not too much hassle there. Another thing that happens 
fairly often, and that's partly because this train comes early, is there's usually a stopping service that's going southbound that gets to Wivelsfield, just as this train here wants to cross the junction. Now, sometimes you've got enough time to bring this across before you need to set that route out of there. But just watch that. It's This is timetabled to cross Kima Junction before the train from Lewis comes down. But like I say, because this is so early, you can often get that across the junction as long as the train it's joining, if it is joining, is already in the station ready to go. Or if this one is first to join, obviously then you can send that one first and then the, the one here will, will join it on the back. Other than that, nothing. there's nothing particularly tricky there. It's just, again, paying attention to head codes, what's going where. The T head code is for Thameslink trains. So these are the ones, if you notice, from usually Bedford to Brighton, uh, Brighton to Bedford. So that's what T is. The A trains are uh, Victoria to Brighton. So again, the A's and the T's generally go straight down. H are the trains to Hove. So we'll see that in a bit. They turn right and they go round, avoiding Brighton. And like I say, the trains from Lewis are usually F for Eastbourne. I don't know. Again, down here, we got uh, bi-directional lines. Uh, but again, in this timetable, haven't had to use them. I just use them in the normal direction. There's nothing at all to regulate here. These trains, they obviously just do their stuff. The timetable is obviously designed for the faster trains to usually be in front of the slower trains. Clearly, if one of the trains is delayed a lot, there's, you know, as a signalman, your job is to work out what to do. But otherwise, that's fairly straightforward, which then brings us to the next uh, interesting part of the simulation. I mean, really, this is the other half of it. And this is where kind of all the stuff starts kicking off. So you've got a lot of things going on here. Let's first of all talk about Preston Park. So you'll notice that some of the signals around Preston Park don't have auto buttons on them and others I've left not on auto. And the reason is simply that a lot of trains come around this loop and come back the other way through the loop and lots of trains come up from Brighton. So like I say, the H trains, which, are, which is like that one, You'll see it's designed to go to Preston Park Platform 3, which is there. It will go around to Hove Platform 3, which is down there. And then it will go along towards wherever, Little Hampton in this case. So this train here, 1H93, has actually come into Platform 1 and is about to go up to Shoreham. Usually the H trains go through to Platform 3, but again, just check on that. The other thing about Preston Park is there are sidings here. So you do get empty coach in stock going into and coming out of the sidings at Preston Park. Some of the empty coaching stock trains are held here for a period of time. And a general note on all of the uh, ECS movements on this simulation is uh, they can be all over the, the, the place in terms of their timings. So it's not uncommon for a, an ECS service to arrive 30 minutes early somewhere. So just be very careful how far you let them go so that they don't end up blocking a line somewhere particularly when they're going into a platform there really aren't enough platforms at Brighton and you know you, what you don't need is an ECS train for instance here not being able to get into a platform for 20 minutes as you can see there aren't any avoiding lines here these lines here are not bi-directional so if a train comes here and you've blocked this line basically you're screwed you'd have to you know do whatever do whatever you need to do to, to get around that but be very careful with the ECS um, moves so that's Preston Park. The junction here kind of, you know, works in a normal way. There's nothing particularly special here. Like I say, the 1H trains will come around the loop and usually, but not always, will go into Platform 3. We'll talk about Hove in a second because that's quite special. And like I say, most of the trains that come around the loop that way usually come into Platform 1 from Shoreham direction. Once they go into Platform 1, again, they come around here, sometimes through Platform 1 onto the main line, sometimes through platform two. They don't usually stop here, so either of those is not usually a problem, but it's usually best to stick to what the timetable says because you might get surprised one day when something happens that you didn't expect. So that's usually my kind of rule with that. So that's Preston Park. Hove is a station on the, uh, the avoiding line here. So obviously if your trains come in through Hove, they're not coming into Brighton. So they come around the loop, they come in here. Now there's a couple of things. First thing just to note is there are sidings here. 
tends to be uh, ECS stock going into Hove Yard at this end because generally the trains come out that way. Sometimes they go around to Preston Park and reverse. Sometimes they go out here and along uh, the, the branch line into Brighton that way. And obviously there are services that go in as well. I'll talk about the blue things in a second. Uh, so that's the, the other thing. There are track circuit overrides. I haven't had to use them. What these do is these allow you to shunt into any of the platforms, even if the shunt signal is saying I'm not going to go white because there's already a train in there. So if you do ever need to join things, I don't think I've joined anything in Hove, but you can override them there. Haven't used those yet. And the other thing to note it to note about Hove is there tends to be a pattern that's followed. There tends to be a shuttle train that comes down from Brighton. And generally, you want to put that into platform two. That will cause an overlap here, which means that you can't signal this train, even if it's going into platform one. You can't signal it from here until the train has got into platform two and stopped so that the overlap uh, route goes off. So just be careful. Don't again, as probably a general rule of Brighton, don't click through the routes too far in one go because there's lots of places for things to pop up and go. Hello, I need to come out now. Can you, you know, can you let me out? Uh, at which point you're you're kind of too late. So usually the rule is the shuttle comes into platform two. Once uh, by that point, there's usually a one H train that's here. So by the time that um, train's coming into platform two and just clearing this junction. Usually that will signal into um, platform three. And usually I have this on auto because most of the platform one trains are going up. They're not going down. I assume that's down. So usually I've got that um, set to there with that autoed. And then once that, like I say, the overlap's gone off, usually there'll be a 1H train at the same time coming in this direction, which you can obviously then signal into platform one and get ready to take take that that way. And then what happens with um, the shuttle at platform two, you'll need to right click and, you know, interpose a new code. And then that's ready to go back towards Brighton. And you'll find that during the day, oops, scrolling the wrong way. These two E ones, as you can see here, this is one of them. Leaves platform two, goes to Hove platform two and becomes two E04. And they just, uh, it must be a boring job for the driver, but they just pretty much shuttle backwards and forwards. And I'm guessing the idea is if you're going to say, uh, Worthing or that direction, why send two trains? You get the shuttle to platform two, you can then cross over to platform three, get the train that's just come from London and then carry on on that train. So there are some through trains, but the, the 2E code is a shuttle. So that's pretty much Hove. Then we have what to talk about next. Uh, let's talk about the easy bits first and then we'll talk about all the kind of depot moves. The lines from Lewis tend to be very easy to operate because generally the class two trains always go into platform eight because of the auto code insertion you will get in this case 2d45 code will appear on the exit as soon as that train's pulled into platform eight and that train then because they're emus you don't have to do anything when it comes time to leave again all of these platforms have train ready to start on them so you get your buzzer to tell you that you're ready to kind of go out again. Uh, and they tend to just go into platform eight and out, in and out. And then there are some class one trains that usually go into platform seven. And again, into platform seven, out platform seven, into platform seven, etc. So in general, they're fairly easy. Every now and then you do get a funny one. I mean, that looks like that's a Lewis train that's in platform six. So for whatever reason, that is a train that's actually going out there even though it's usually platform seven and eight but generally as you can see from the layout of the of the tracks here platform six seven and eight kind of stay out the way of the rest of the traffic which is really nice because it makes that much easier six tends to get used a bit for uh, a couple of different things usually for london and thameslink trains but as you can see here sometimes a lewis train and there is probably one, there might be two services where there's a train from Lewis that crosses all the way over and maybe goes into platform three. And that might be because it's an empty coaching stock train ready to go back into Lover's Walk Depot. And there is another train that I think comes in from down here and leaves up to here with a 2F head code. So again, F for Lewis, F for Eastbourne, whatever it is. And the two Ds come in and they leave as two Ds as well. So yeah. All of that kind of takes care of itself pretty much. 
And similarly down the bottom here, platform one and two, as you can see, there isn't really much connection to the rest of the station. The only thing you can do is get into half of platform three from the West Loop and likewise get out from platform three. So most of the time, the trains from this branch will go into platforms one and two. Sometimes they go into platform three, sometimes they come out of platform three. And the only thing to watch here is that some of these overlaps uh, will block certain routes. So again, don't be too keen to route your train all the way through, let's say, to here, put in an overlap here, which is then going to block the West Loop. Just be a little bit careful. You can kind of do it last minute. The trains are not going very fast when they get to here. So it's not the end of the world if it gets to the uh, to a red signal, if there's another one pulling out. Usually what I do is when a train's ready to leave, say Hove, to come back again, I'll quickly just check and say, when's, when's this one leaving? Uh, 1849, seven minutes from now. OK, I've got time. I can signal it straight through. Uh, so, yeah, so just be careful. Most of them, 90 percent, 95 percent, platforms one and two. But keep checking because there are ones that go into platform three. And then the central platforms, mostly four and five, and then less less so platforms three and six are the trains that come from London. So you'll see here that's uh, a Victoria train. That's one A train. So and then this is obviously an empty coaching stock, but that would have been a Victoria train as well. If we go back here, we see a, a stopping Thameslink service has just left. And this one here is going to come in and become another stopping Thames link. I guess we're getting quite late. It's 20 to 7 in the evening. Again, not particularly um, much to worry about. There is one, well, there's kind of two problems that I've faced with this. First of all, the timetable platforms are all over the place. So sometimes you get a train like this and you look and it go, oh, yeah, I'm going into, well, here, platform three. And you're looking going in a second, there's a train in platform three. Now, in this case, I assume that's about to leave. So that's leaving at yeah, two minutes. So that will be fine. It's going all the way back up to Gatwick Airport, which is fun. Uh, but sometimes you'll kind of get that. And so it's getting to Brighton at, at 1848. And you click on that and say, well, that's not leaving till, you know, 1902 or something. And so, of course, what you have to do, as every signal would signaler would have to do, is you'd have to replatform it. Most of the time I've been able to put it on the adjacent platform. So if it's supposed to be three, four has been empty and I've put it into four. Uh, but there's another reason to make sure that you're not um, putting the roots and getting this right into a platform and then going, oh, that one actually that's supposed to leave now. So be very careful. The platforms, you can't do everything the timetable tells you to do. Don't worry about that. Deal with it as best you can. I don't think you lose that many points if you um, get the platform wrong. In fact, I can probably bring up my stats. 97%, so 22 incorrect platforms out of 782 is not, not the end of the world. So, yep, be careful with platforming. The other thing is there's lots of joining and dividing of trains here. So, as you can see here, platform 5 and 6, you can actually see by the track circuit that these trains are not very long. If you click on them, I think it does tell you somewhere, or it tells you that's six coaches of class 377. Uh, all of the platforms here can take 12 coaches, but one of the problems now is you've got these kind of 442 trains, which are 10 coaches long, and there are a few timetable moves that tell you to join trains where there's like a 10 coach train and like a six coach train and you try and join it and then the train's like stuck halfway across the throat to the station so i think that's happened once where it was an absolute disaster and i think i ended up removing the train again it's obviously a timetable issue so if you want to find out which one that isn't going to fix it of course you can do that but you'll you'll have to join trains Again, because you're joining trains, you might think, oh, it's great. Let's chuck it into platform six. It's joining that one. You go, oh, hang on a second. No, it's not joining this one. No, it's joining a different one, uh, what have you. So just be a little bit careful of that. Obviously, you can always bring up this, pause the simulation, have a look where everything is and go, right, what is in Brighton platform six? Brighton platform six is 2A51. Great. Now, the reason 2A51 is there is because there's another train in front of it, which I... I don't know. don't know what I've done with that. Maybe cock that up. But yeah, just, just keep an eye on that. You can use your sticky notes, right click, add sticky note, just to keep an eye on things. Because otherwise what happens is if I bring that train in to that platform, then that code gets overwritten by that code, which sometimes hide the fact that there might be a different train that was already in there. So uh, yeah, interestingly, actually, one, one Q51. Don't know where that is. That's, where did I think that was? That was... 
Brighton at 6.46 to Lewis. Oh, no, that might be right. Might be right. It's in front of a... Uh, in front of that is that right platform six brighton oh it is yeah so there are two trains in there just they're not very long so that's uh platforming just yeah be a bit careful again like i say you don't have really any freedom in here for mainline trains you have one downline one upline you can't afford to cock things up so that's that ignore this stuff i didn't use it I haven't used it at all the goods yard i'm guessing you could invent another timetable if you wanted to but really, uh, kind of one of the things, particularly when you first start the simulation, you're seeding a lot of trains, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff happening down at Lover's Walk Depot. So most of your empty coaching stock is going to come from and go into these. Now, when the train appears from, let's say, uh, L11, Signal 11, you'll get a message coming up here. Usually, like you would normally do, saying it's uh, entered at L11. You'll see the head code on the berth here, so you can see what it is. And obviously, like most trains, you can click on it, see where it's supposed to go. Now, the issue we have with Brighton, and it's apparently it's a real, a kind of a realism issue, is some of these points in real life do not automatically go back to normal after they've been set. So let's say you set, um, I shouldn't really do this, but let's say you set a, a signal like that. Let's just, let me just uh, slow this slow this down a bit so I can show you. Let's just put it there so I can unpause it. So if I do this um, and set that route, and then it's going very slowly because I've turned the speed right down. Right, so that's now reversed. Those points are reversed. If I now cancel that, it's obviously gonna have to wait now because there's approach locking on the signal, which is fine. Just make sure nothing else is going to kick off while I'm showing you this. Uh, once that resets, the line will go grey because the route has been reset. But you notice that something weird happens and you get an error comes up in here. Let's just remove those messages. Uh, sorry, that's going to take a little while now, isn't it? Because it's going so slow. So I might as well have a quick check, make sure I haven't killed anybody else yet. Uh, 1B27. There's the... Uh, TRTS and B is going to go to Brighton, which is nice. So, sure, I should probably have sped uh, SF3. should speed up a little bit, otherwise we'll be here all night. So, what happens, what's going to happen here, you'll see that will cancel down in a second. Yeah, nothing like preparation. There you go. So, although it looks normal here, that's normally what you see on SimSig, you notice after not very long that will start flashing like that and you see a point normalization alarm Oop, just pause that second and the reason is because these don't go back to normal they kind of need the signaler to set them back to normal so that here as you can see you want the the main line to be the main line you want the siding to be the siding you don't want trains to be creeping out of here and rolling onto the main line and all that kind of stuff so on this simulation pretty much anywhere that's connected to the carriage line everywhere you, where you can see blue what it what you need to do is you need to left click the points which basically sets them to normal and once you've set them to normal sorry I'm talking and doing two things. You'll see that the thing stops flashing. The alarm's effectively gone away and that stays then blue. So that's what you have to do in lots of places. It can be a bit annoying because if I want to say go from here up to like platform five, for instance, then I also have to right click these to take off the, the blue bit. And by taking off the blue bit, then I'll be able to set a route across it, which will be fine. But then once I've set the route across it, eventually that will flash again. I'll have to set them back to normal and set them to blue. Although interestingly, you can once you've actually locked them normal, you can take the lock off again if you want. Um, and that might save you time uh, in the future. But that's kind of kind of what that's there for. So that's fine. So we talk about Lover's Walk. If you're sending trains into Lover's Walk Depot, you have to request a slot. You left click the button here for the relevant signal. And then after a period of time, it's not usually too long, but it can be a couple of minutes. So again, make sure you've got the slot before you make the train block anywhere. Usually if I'm bringing trains in from here, I'll always request the L11 slot because usually I've got space to bring a train onto the carriage road. So it's off of the main line. So even if it waits here, it's not gonna block anything else. 
in the morning this gets a little bit busy but it's it's not not crazy you shouldn't struggle too much uh so yeah that's the uh the slots to get into there hove yard if i remember correctly you have to call them um yeah hang on a sec let me unpause it place call yeah hove yard is the only one on this system that you have to call if you want to send a train here you can leave a, tra a train parked here ready to go into a hove yard that's not usually a problem but you have to call them and ask them for permission and they always say yes as far as i can tell so that's fine and i think that's probably mostly uh, i think i've mostly covered everything so yeah the um getting used to clicking these blue things and normalizing the points afterwards it's a bit of a pain uh it's a bit annoying because obviously you keep getting red messages all the time but it's kind of not the end of the world like i say when you first start doing this it's all a little bit much but it doesn't take long this is the first time i've played the simulation and as you can see i'm now quarter to seven in the evening and i haven't struggled too much so it is definitely doable I wouldn't recommend it for a complete beginner. There's definitely too much going on for that. It does have that nice ability to slow it down to half normal speed when you're first doing stuff just to try and work out where everything is, working out where Hove Yard is, where Lover's Walk is, where the, um, what's it called, West Carriage Road is and stuff like that. But there isn't too much. That's not in use. That's pretty much, like I say, pretty much runs itself. Just be careful of platforming. Uh, this thing here again it's not particularly hard you just got to pay attention to pathing and particularly with regulating trains just keep an eye on stuff where's this going to go platform one right i can set that as soon as that 1a clears i can set that in there ready to go and not pay attention otherwise it's mostly good fun uh the only manual level crossing is that one which is nice because nothing more pain in the neck than putting level crossings down and stuff but other than that you shouldn't have too many problems so hopefully you're going to enjoy this any other questions obviously just give us a shout and um yeah put something in the comments